In 1980, the first submarine of Project 941 Akula, NATO reporting name Typhoon, was launched in the USSR. These are huge nuclear-powered undersea craft with a total displacement of 48,000 tons and a hull length of 175 meters, armed with 20 underwater-launched ballistic missiles. This is a unique submarine. First of all, because she is the largest submarine in the world. The Project 941 Typhoon would be the largest undersea craft to be constructed by any nation. The Typhoon was designed by Sergei Kovalev at the Rubin Design Bureau as the Soviet Union's reaction to the United States Navy's new Ohio-class submarine. The Ohio-class nuclear submarine were armed with 24 ballistic missiles and had a total displacement of 18,750 tons, with a hull length of 170.7 meters. That is, the Soviet Typhoon, carrying four fewer missiles than the Ohio, had a displacement of more than two and a half times that of the American boat. But why? To understand this, you need to listen to the opinions of some experts. We created a salon in the submarine where the crew can get together. We created recreation areas where they can exercise, then wash and go to rest. In other countries, in order to save the volume, weight and dimensions of submarines, so-called warm beds are made for sailors. One bed for three people. While one person is sleeping, the second is in the salon, and the third is at the workplace. Then they change. Our requirements for the living conditions of seafarers do not allow this. We have completely different requirements. That's why our submarines are somewhat larger than American, French or English ones. So, designer Vladimir Pilov claims that Soviet submarines were so large because they created additional amenities for the cruise service. Indeed, the Typhoon submarine was equipped with a gym, a relaxation area with songbirds, an oak-planked sauna, a solarium and a swimming pool measuring 4 by 2 meters and 2 meters deep. The large number of officers and warrants have two or four-man staterooms. But it's hard to believe that this is precisely why a combat submarine was built of such enormous size. So you should listen to other experts. When we started working on the Typhoon project, the level of mechanical engineering in the Soviet Union was much lower than in America, Germany, England. Before the Typhoon, Soviet submarines were armed with liquid propellant ballistic missiles. This caused many problems since the fuel and oxidizer components were very toxic. If an accident involving rocket fuel occurred, it was accompanied by serious consequences. The Typhoon was already the third generation of Soviet submarines. Therefore, we decided from now on, we will install solid propellant missiles on submarines. Submarine missile designers were initially against this decision. Submarine missile engine designer Viktor Makiev was also an opponent of solid fuel missiles. He understood perfectly well that, with our technical level, 
he would not be able to create a suitable solid propellant missile, at least at the same level as the American Trident submarine missile. But ultimately, Engineer McKeeve created the R-39 solid propellant missile for the Typhoon. It weighed 100 tons. This missile was not inferior to the American ones in terms of combat characteristics, that is, charge power, accuracy of hitting the target, and range of action. But it was twice as heavy and correspondingly larger in size than the Trident. In this regard, we had a question how to place such large missiles on a submarine. Moreover, initially there should have been 24 of them. Kovalev and his team considered numerous design variations, including conventional designs, that is a single elongated pressure hull with the missile tubes placed in two rows. But this approach was discarded because it would have produced a submarine more than 235 meters long, far too great a length for available dry docks and other facilities. In the end, a solution was found that made it possible to make the submarine a little less than 173 meters long. In the end, we came up with the idea of building a submarine not with one pressure hull but with two like a catamaran. The ship has two parallel main pressure hulls to house crew, equipment, and propulsion machinery. The 20 missile tubes are placed between these hulls in two rows, forward of the sail. To this we must add that the Typhoon had not two, but five pressure hulls. In addition to the two main ones mentioned above, the torpedo compartment, the central control room, and the aft sealed compartment were made of separate modules connected by communication channels. All this was covered by a massive outer hull, resulting in the world's largest submarine. Thus, the Typhoon, having a total of 17 hull compartments, had a lot of free internal space for arranging additional amenities for the crew. That's all. In fact, the Typhoon submarine was so large not because they wanted to provide comfortable conditions for the sailors, but because it was necessary to place very large missiles on her. At sea, the Typhoon had some difficulties with control and seakeeping. Still, the ships could be considered highly successful and provided a highly capable strategic striking force. Six Typhoon-class submarines were built between 1976 and 1985. To date, they have all been decommissioned. But the views of experts on the submarine and its missile system were not unanimous. One submarine designer wrote, To my mind, the creation of the Project 941 was a great mistake. A solid propellant ballistic missiles had no appreciable advantages over a liquid propellant ones. Such an expensive project like the Project 941, which had been developed parallel with the Project 667 BDRM, were the ruin of the USSR. Such ill-considered decisions, which were lobbied by the definite industrial circles, undermined the Soviet economy and contributed to the loss of the Cold War. But there were no doubts about the typhoon among ordinary Soviet citizens. She was a source of pride for them, these people believed that if something is the biggest, it means that it is the best. The same opinion is shared in modern Russia. But what do you think, is the typhoon the fruit of the Soviet design genius or the result of the technical backwardness of the USSR? Please write your comment about this.